Okay, how's it going, everybody? I hope you're all doing well. Okay, well, so in today's episode, I thought I'd try to say something about the French writer and philosopher Albert Camus. And this time, I want to talk about his great 1956 novel, The Fall, which, uh, by the way, was his last uh, complete work. He died uh, four years later in a car accident. Anyway, okay, so what's it all about? Well, okay, so the main character is a man called Jean-Baptiste Clements. Now, Clements had at one time been a, a really successful lawyer in, uh, in Paris, where he had defended, among others, the poor and the victimized. And because he had done this, he had gained a, um, a sterling reputation. That's to say, he was admired and respected by the public for his, um, his empathy and for his devotion to good deeds and for his acts of charity. And the important thing is that he too believed in his own goodness. Okay, but then something happened. One dark night, as he was crossing the, the Seine River, he heard a young woman jump from the bridge into the water. Now, here's the thing. Although Clemence heard her body hit the water and then heard her crying in despair, he failed to turn back and try to help her. He just paused for a moment and then simply passed by onto the other side of the river. Well, suffice it to say, after this incident, he was never the same again. That's to say, this experience was a sort of revelation and it went on to, to haunt him. And how did it do this exactly? Well, what this incident did is it stripped him of his previous moral comfort and his sense of self-worth. In other words, what he came to see about himself is that all his previous good deeds were, well, they were basically a sham. They were based on the acknowledgement and on the applause of other people. His supposed kindness and empathy just hadn't been genuine. And uh, Clements knew this because at the moment when he was sure that no one was watching him under the bridge, he failed to do the right thing and save the woman in the river. From that point on, his moral bankruptcy and his cowardice became clear to him. Now, having had his uh, noble image shattered like this, having seen himself for uh, what he really is, what Clements does after this is he sort of lapses into a life of, um, of debauchery. And what he eventually does is he eventually quits his job as a lawyer, and then he leaves Paris, and then he ends up as a kind of bar stool in a pub in Amsterdam, a seedy underground pub called Mexico City Bar. And actually, it's at this point that we're first introduced to Clements in the novel. His new way of life now is to basically approach strangers in the bar and confess to them his moral failures in part so as to directly get them to see their own hypocrisy and cowardice. What Clements is, in effect, acting as is a mirror held up to their own lives, forcing them to, uh, to confront their own lack of innocence. Okay, well... So, this is not a, um, a light and optimistic novel. It has very little to do with human innocence, which actually Camus explored in one of his earliest works called The Stranger. I mean, in that novel, you could argue that it's actually innocence that's the source of the main character's alienation from society and from other people. What's more, this novel, The Fall, has little to do with the capacity for, for human goodness either. And actually, that's something Camus had pushed in his previous novel, The Plague. I mean, there you get characters like Dr. Ryu, who does anything he can to help others from dying, even though, of course, it's futile. And uh, you get the character Taru, whose goal is to become, as he says, a saint without God. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that in the fall, unequivocal 
human innocence and goodness go completely out the door. No, this is a dark and a pessimistic book. Its major theme is one of guilt and uh, moral ambiguity and just, well, just the duplicity of human nature. Okay, well, so let's leave the, uh, the more formal aspects of the book and now take a look at what it is that Camus is partly trying to say in the fall. So let's go back to uh, Clements by the river again. Remember, with nobody around, when nobody was watching him, he chose not to come to the rescue of the young woman drowning. Actually, um, you know what? I'm reminded here a bit of what Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 6.3. What he said was this. He said, When you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Now, I take it that here Jesus is referring to something like our intentions or the condition of our hearts when we act charitably. That's to say, there's something suspect and hypocritical about giving to somebody, but also at the same time being very public about it or wanting others to notice our generosity. If our intention in giving is to make ourselves feel righteous or to trumpet that righteousness for others to applaud, then our moral acts are not genuine ones. This is why Jesus counsels us to, to give, but to give in secret when nobody is watching. That's the true test. When, when nothing's in it for us, at least not um, in this life. Anyway, there is some of this hypocrisy or two-facedness at work in Clements. When he was a lawyer, he used morality to get ahead or to, to shine. His morality was ultimately a kind of um, dressed-up self-interest, or better yet, um, self-love, which gets exposed, of course, when he fails to help the drowning woman. Now, more generally, I think that what Clements is telling us is that we're all like this to some extent. We all, to some degree, cloak our motives with good intentions. We, we self-mask. There is an underside to our um, shiny virtues. At the root of our virtues is what Iris Murdoch called our fat, relentless ego. Maybe another way of putting this is that we're all guilty, whether we want to face up to it or not. Like Clements, we've all fallen. We're all guilty and compromised and um, duplicitous in some measure. And so our pretensions to selflessness are often just hypocrisy. Beneath our selflessness is selfishness. And uh, by the way, we don't have to go very far to see this, I think. Especially if you think about our contemporary world of social media. I mean, I think you could argue that if, if our society has a commitment to justice, then it's often a, um, a pretty superficial one. The genuine article seems to basically have been lost. What I mean is that there's a lot of shallow, disingenuous virtue signaling today. I mean, think about the whole notion of activism. What was at one time real, hardworking, costly activism has now pretty much been replaced by, um, by insta-morality by a quick performative gestures, by token public support, or by bandwagoning, and of course by facile social media posts. All which of course demands little sacrifice. Hey, apparently you don't even need to get out of bed to do the right thing and get hundreds of like clicks for it. Now all this raises the question Clements or Camus is asking. What are our real motivations? Are we really as morally excellent as we think we are? Bye for now.